The Northland is an amazing place, and we're hitting the road to show off your town. Today, the spotlight's on the Grand Rapids area. Your town starts now. Welcome to the land of 10,000 lakes. We're taking our show on the road again for the third trip in our Your Town Summer Series. Today we're broadcasting from the beautiful Grand Rapids area in Itasca County. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendall Jarbo. And I'm Rob Coles. Right now we are at the Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset, which is a beautiful place to be. We've got a lot to show you tonight. We'll take a tour of Itasca County and show you some hidden gems. And we will introduce you to the owner of a small family-run resort and show you the incredible amount of work it takes to keep it running all of that and a whole lot more coming up in the special your town broadcast but first we do want to give you a little introduction to the grand rapids area in case you're not super familiar the city of grand rapids itself is right on the mississippi river which helped it become a major logging town over time businesses like the blandon paper mill helped the area grow 11,000 people now call grand rapids home and Itasca County is rich in history, recreation, and the arts. Attached to Grand Rapids High School is the Rife Performing Arts Center. Features live music, theater, and dance year-round. Center got a $12 million expansion in 2016. Programs are open to people from all over. Can anyone be a part? Does it have to be Grand Rapids kiddos? Or? Anywhere. Okay. Anybody that wants to come, they come and audition for parts. And then it's most of the plays are grades 3 through 12. And the Rife also has a scene shop and a dance wing equipped with studios and teachers. The expansion added uh, a makeup area to the dressing rooms there. And all the costumes uh, possibly, you could, you could possibly imagine. And we have just been having a blast out here at the Sugar Lake Lodge all day. But back in studio is our Ryan Half with a look at today's top stories. Kendall and Rob in Superior today, construction hit a new milestone on a natural gas facility. This morning, the Northern Wisconsin Building and Construction Trades Council signed a letter of intent with Minnesota Power. This move ensures union labor will build the Namanji Trail Energy Center. The NTEC facility will be located across the street from the Enbridge plant there. According to the Wisconsin Building Trades Council, the $750 million natural gas facility will generate 350 construction jobs as it also makes the largest private investment in Douglas County history. Construction is scheduled to be finished in 2026. The facility is then set to be in operation by the year 2027. Here in Duluth, families were learning all about public safety down at Bayfront today. The Duluth Police Department held their 14th annual Kids, Cops and Cars event. It brings the community and public safety workers together to form a relationship and enjoy some sweet treats at the same time. This gives public safety officials the chance to show their work cars, gear, ambulances, as well as their canines why we work in close cooperation with our law enforcement partners and so we, you know came down to be part of that event and, and you know show people what public safety has to offer and of course those canine officers got in their treats as well down in moose lake minnesota the pickleball craze that has swept the nation has now resulted in brand new courts for their city the moose lake area pickleball club recently unveiled four new courts at art olgren park the courts were built in an effort to improve facilities at the park and make up for the growing number of players here in the Northland. According to Tim Caroline, who is a USA Pickleball ambassador, since those courts were opened in late June, the number of players that use the court has grown from 15 to over 40. And it's an addictive sport, and people have commented about their blood pressure is down since they've started, they've lost weight, they're having fun. Uh, the mental health aspect is great because uh, people are developing relationships and uh, talking with each other. The courts are open to the public and there are open play times on Monday mornings and Thursday evenings. We have more information on our website, northernnewsnow.com. Taking you back out to the Grand Rapids area now for the remainder of our Your Town series, which includes meteorologist Hunter McCullough. But I got to say for those who missed the four and six o'clock, Hunter A caught a fish live on camera. And then B proceeded to make a hole in one on the cornhole board game. I mean, Hunter, it sounds like the best day of your life so far today. 
It's been amazing. It doesn't really get better than this, and I think it's all settled. I I'm living out here now, so it's over. I made some good friends. We got plenty of good food out here, good camaraderie here. I'm almost on the water. I'm sitting on this deck thing here, and the sun is setting, and it really doesn't get better than this. This is what I call paradise, and I, I don't care. I might have to quit because I'm staying out here forever, so there we go. But we got some beautiful conditions around the Northland here for the rest of today, and right now we do have these temperatures into the 70s, a couple 60s here and there, 70 currently on top of the hill 72 in park point 70 in superior winds out of the north northwest at 12 miles per hour but some 60s off to our north right now here in grand rapids i mean not very many clouds in the sky but up towards uh, areas like ely and or a few more clouds uh, 69 currently in ashland 64 into ely we do have this air quality warning but right now honestly up here it's pretty darn good right now but the air quality uh, is that's gonna be lasting at least through friday evening in minnesota lasting a little longer over into northwest wisconsin Wisconsin. Into the evening hours for Duluth tonight, a low of 51 degrees, mostly clear skies, and that will continue into our Friday, which is absolutely beautiful. So, Rob and uh, Kendall, I, I think I met a bunch of people. I think one of them is going to let me bunk with them, hopefully. That's uh, what I'm going to try to work out. So after the show's over, just leave me here, go on home, and uh, I'll, I'll find my way back at some point in time. But <laughs> Paradise is calling me. I think I'm just going to chill out here for a little bit. Hunter, I'm convinced I'm never going to see you in the studio again. I think I've lost a meteorologist after today. <laughs> Looks very comfortable out there. You're in your element. It was a good run. It was a good run, we'll but I think this is my you. place to live now. I think, I think you're right, Hunter. All right, we'll talk to you later. And we did mention how important logging is to the area, and the timber industry has been linked to northeast Minnesota for more than a century. And a local attraction in Grand Rapids is offering an up-close look at the life of a logger from years ago. The Forest History Center created a replica of a logging camp from the year 1900. The camp includes a bunkhouse, cook shack, a barn complete with draft horses, and many other buildings appropriate to the time period. According to site manager, Pete Mall said the workers were logging with white pine, which was one of the most in-demand building materials in the country. You know, built houses, banks, stores, and that's towns, and then that's kind of nation building. So a lot of the men were kind of aware of that and proud of the work they were doing, considering they were essentially somewhat building the nation at the time. Life was not easy for the loggers. They were up before the sun and in bed early after a long day of hard work. Now, if you visit the replica camp, you can hear the stories of the Northwoods lumberjacks told by costumed guides. I stopped by for a closer look. In addition to giving people a chance to step back into history, the center gives attendees a chance to experience life in a logging camp hands-on. According to the staff of the History Center, loggers were paid about $1 per day. Lodging was free and meals were provided. In addition to the logging camp, the Forest History Center also offers kayaking, a horse-drawn trolley, a fire tower, and a visitor center. And there are so many ways to enjoy lake life in Grand Rapids, from private cabins to big operations like where we're at today to quaint family-owned resorts. Running a business, no matter what type, is no easy task. I recently met a Minnesota man who has become a resort owner at a time in life when many people choose to kick back and relax. Take a look. Endless time at the lake. It's a retirement dream come true. Winding down my career, um, I'm working with a plumbing, heating, sewer, water, well wholesaler. I head up their sewer, water, and well segment, and I've been doing that for the last 35 years. But for Kirk Christofferson, his golden years on the water may be busy. The water clarity on this chain is just incredible. Four years ago, he and his wife started looking to buy a large house on Pacagama Lake. So we wanted to be on a bigger lake with a few more activities, sand beach for the grandkids, things like that. They fell in love with the property and took the plunge. But it wasn't just a house. And at the time, I didn't realize I was going to end up running a resort. I actually have fallen in love with it. Christofferson is now the proud owner of the Pacagama Lake Resort. The gig has its perks. Shoes seem to be optional. And you can't beat the view. We got the beautiful bay here. We got Mishawaka over there, Camp Mishawaka. But keeping the resort's four bedroom lodge and cabins guest ready is no easy feat. Thankfully, he's got a dedicated co owning staff. I'm, I am generally maintenance and yard keeping. My wife and daughter are housekeeping. Also known as the Christofferson family. But every Saturday is our changeover day, so those days I am cleaning. 
Um, I clean all three units in the morning, and then we have check back in at <laughs> at um, three, and that's my dog Nelly. Nelly's work responsibilities are less defined. She runs around and watches for squirrels. <laughs> uh, the rest of the time, if I'm not cleaning, I'm usually helping getting boats out. An extremely important job, because after all... For most guests, a trip to the Bacagam Lake Resort isn't about the cabins at all. It's about spending time on the water. The appeal to staying at the resort? Yeah. The lake. <laughs> Marty Spitzner has been vacationing in the area for decades from Colorado. My wife is from here. She grew up here, and uh, we've been coming back every year for 40 years. He's been staying at the resort since before the Christoffersons bought it, a tradition he plans to continue. And when we're leaving here, this year we'll book for next year. I mean, this is... 1955 vintage. And in the coming years, the Spitzners yeah. may have even more room options. Christofferson has purchased six more cabins on the lakes with hopes to renovate and expand the operation. It's gorgeous. Picking up speed at a time in life when many yeah. slow down. Been working long and hard hours all my life. Didn't really want to just go to a complete shutdown. Knew that I would have to have something else to do to keep me busy. An active retirement on a relaxing Minnesota lakeshore. In Grand Rapids, Rob Coles, Northern News Now. The Pekegam Lake Resort is open all year long. The Christoffersons say it's situated close to golf courses, ATV and snowmobile trails, but we've got more information about them at northernnewsnow.com. How fun was that, just seeing it and being able to be outside and yeah. all that they offer? It was, it was pretty relaxing. I mean, I was working, but it was pretty relaxing. Yeah. And that boat was... Very nice. I like uh, the dog's job duties. That seems Adorable like a good gig. Dog. Yes, Nelly, Nelly, <laughs> Nelly's a, a good worker. Incredible for sure. Well, there's so much fun to still be had here. After the break, we're talking to a representative with the resort where we're broadcasting from live right now about all the opportunities for guests. Stay with us. We are live tonight outside of the Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset. And joining me now is Abby Oxborough, the owner and general manager. Abby, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Appreciate it so much. Can you tell us about this family-owned business? Yeah, my parents bought and built this back in the early 90s. Um, but my, my dad's been a part of the resort business his entire life. Um, goes back hundreds of years with the Rutger family. Um, so I grew up here. This was my backyard, and we are just thrilled to be keeping it in the family. What's your favorite part about welcoming guests into this space and what all are the, what all is there for them to do here? Uh, there's too much. Um, <laughs> honestly, the best part is seeing people come back and just those relationships that we've created throughout the years. Um, the biggest thing is that, I mean, our lake is gorgeous. It's, it's endless with the canoes, the kayaks, the paddle boards, all that stuff. It's our, it's our pride and joy. We love this, this crystal clear lake. Well, this is just a slice of heaven. Just Absolutely. the afternoon that I've been here, I've fallen <laughs> in love with the space. For you personally, Abby, what is your favorite time of the year to be outdoors and what do you enjoy doing? Mm, great question. I honestly think August is the perfect time because yes. it gets a little bit chillier at night and we're the people that really love when the windows are open. So, but, but you can't beat the lake. Anything that's water, any of it, we swim every day. It's just what we do. It's, it's in our blood. It's amazing. You've seen lots of people paddle boarding today and kayaking mm -hmm. and even Hunter caught a fish earlier. <laughs> so that is super fun. Uh, what's the best way for people to find out about the resort and kind uh, of book a room? We, we love social media. Um, we take all all inquiries, all messages, sugarlakelodge.com. You can answer, I mean, we'll answer any questions that come in. I am on top of all of the social media, so if you send us a DM, I'll be the one answering it. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Abby, thank you for not only doing this interview, but for You're hosting welcome. us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It. Appreciate it. Let's take a check in now with the weather with meteorologist Hunter McCullough. Thank you, Kendall and Rob. And yeah, it is beautiful. I keep saying the word paradise, and there is no exaggeration in that word. Absolutely perfect night. We got the clear skies. Uh, all I'm missing is like a margarita or a beer, some kind of beverage at, at my side here. But uh, I got to drive home, unfortunately. So absolutely beautiful here this evening. And not only that, but our photog, Alex, is in the water currently. He's got some nibbles on his feet, and he uh, does, probably deserves next month probably the employee of the month. I'm just saying, uh, Todd, if you're watching back at home, 
uh, probably going to be Alex next uh, next month. We'll have to see what happens here. But absolutely beautiful here around our region and still seeing these temperatures into the 70s for most locations. Right now, we're seeing 70 degrees on top of the hill. We're seeing 68 into Orr, 64 in Ely, 69 over there in Siren. Also the same story in Hayward. Mostly cloudy skies to our north, but right here in Grand Rapids, I'll tell you what, not too many clouds in the sky, not too shabby at all. Air quality warning still in effect over into Minnesota, lasting until 11 o'clock in the evening on Friday. A little bit longer if you live over in northwest Wisconsin, lasting through Monday morning. As far as our air quality for our day tomorrow, expected to be into the orange, which is unhealthy for sensitive groups. Yellow is moderate, often the very tip of the air ahead. Orange is expected to be over into northwest Wisconsin as well into our Friday. New drought monitor has come out. You can see up here in Grand Rapids, moderate drought, which is kind of that uh, darker shade of the brown, but you can see along the south shore of Lake Superior, northern portions of Douglas and Bayfield County, you can see that there's some exceptional drought, which is the worst that the drought meter can be. So unfortunately, we really still need the rain. Now, fortunately, this drought monitor does not take into account the rain that we saw last night. So hopefully that helped with a lot of that drought, but we're going to have to see and uh, wait here until next Thursday. We have high pressure that's building into our region for today and lingering into the early parts of our Saturday and then eventually some low pressure and high pressure working together to help to bring in some humid and warm conditions into our Saturday afternoon. Some areas may get into the 90s. Then we head into our Sunday, some clear skies at first, some clouds increasing later and seeing some uh, cooler temperatures near Lake Superior, that lake breeze kind of returning into our Sunday afternoon. Temperatures for our Saturday, again, these temperatures getting into the 80s, but a couple 90s down to our southwest. Will be possible. Brainerd, Aiken, Pine City having the best opportunity, but we do have some compressional heating, so maybe near Lake Superior here in Duluth, we could see a 90 degree temperature as well. On top of the hill, 87 for a high on Saturday in Duluth, 79 on Sunday. Again, that lake breeze kicking in. So warmer inland on Sunday and Monday, 75. Slight chance for showers. Unfortunately, not many chances for rain, but uh, we do have some kind of hope on Monday with that 20% chance for some showers. So again, like I said, I'm anchored here for now, except uh, for when I toss this to break. I got to run as fast as I can to get back up to that hill. So if you see me in about three minutes, probably going to be out of breath. We're going to see what happens. Wish me luck. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> well, we have had just such a lovely time here in the Itasca County area, and there's so many cool things left to discuss. We do want to tell you about something called The Forge. It's a 17,000 square foot innovation hub in Grand Rapids. It celebrated its grand opening this week with a heavy focus on trades like welding and woodwork. The Forge allows anyone who has an interest in exploring these skills to collaborate on new ideas. You can learn more about, more about how you can take advantage of it on our website. And no matter where you are in the country, the very best food is typically found in a hole in the wall, and that is the case here in Grand Rapids. It sure is. At a place called Pasties Plus, there are a couple of women baking up thousands of those special mine country meat-filled pastries. And as Northern News Now's Dan Wolf explains, they don't even need advertising to pack the shop. Right off Highway 2, it's an old building, half barber shop, half pasty shop. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Come on in. Walking into Pasties Plus is a trip back in time, filled with old time prices, ancient equipment, great smells, and lots <laughs> of laughter. <laughs> Ruth Pedley is part chef, part comedian. Hopefully it'll be fabulous. If it's not, you don't tell anybody. For 26 years, she's been cracking jokes and packing pastries, oh, sure. opening the shop Mommy, with her dad in Mommy 1997. Bears. She died three years later, so I just keep making them. Using her grandmother's original recipe, she served more than a million pasties over the years, yeah. each one made from scratch. I'm rolling the dough. We refrigerate it overnight, then we milk the edges and she'll come along and fill them and I'll roll, come behind her and roll them. Okay, now I'm rolling. And then we trim the edges so people don't have to pay for a lot of excess dough. Yep. Oven full. She and her staff are a well-oiled machine. Yeah, we're little, but we're... ...time, I got to try one. So I was told... The way to go about this is to just 
cut into it and quote, go to town. So look at that, you can see the beauty in there. Got meat, potatoes, all that, and then phenomenal. A delicious recipe brought to the country by her grandparents' generation, who helped pass these explode in popularity among miners on the range and the UP. My grandpa was a copper miner. Right off the boat from Finland, it was a nice root vegetable in a crust, and the guys could eat it with their hands, you know, any time of day once it's cooked, and then they could just throw the crust away. I didn't throw any of my pasty away, and if you want your own, you won't be able to place an order online due to Ruth's refusal to get with the times. Okay, I could care less about the technology. <laughs> An old school business owner sticking to what she knows, pasties and personality. I just want people to like the pasties so they keep coming in, you know, because it pays my bills, plus they're good. It does smell good outside, though. Oh my goodness, those look so delicious, guys. Oh, oh amazing. man. Now, everybody we talked to said that they were the best pasties they'd ever had, or if they were trying them for the first time, they'd heard how good they were from family or friends. They yeah. look amazing. Thank just another reason to live up here forever and just eat those pasties for the rest of our Hunter, lives. Hunter, I think you're sold Hunter's on the Grand in. Rapids area. I don't know Is why I right? overlooked the Grand Rapids before, but I'm here now. It's go time. I'm going to live here forever. Why not? Plenty of lakes and pasties <laughs> yes, and fish. Yes. Are you okay. still riding on the Catching the Fish high? It was crazy. I mean, yeah. it was perfect timing. It almost looked staged. It was crazy. <laughs> it, yeah, just, it was a moment. It, it was, was a moment. And then he lost it at first, but then he got it right back, and it was just a really cool, cool wonderful. thing. Well, I think Very I can cool. speak for everyone and said we had so much fun broadcasting live out here. We appreciate everyone watching, and we hope you have a great night.